Hello and welcome to your mod spotlight on Asteroid Recycling Technologies with the plugin by RoverDude and the models and textures by Wari. Now this mod essentially adds space to asteroids, which you can utilize for things such as fuel storage. Now this mod adds several parts, but the two main ones that you're going to need to familiarize yourself with are the jaw and the fuel hatch. Now I'm going to arm this jaw just to kind of show off these really cool animations and as well as the fuel hatch. Now because I want to use this rover here that I have kind of installed and stuck to the asteroid I'm just going to well dock it because these components work just like the claws from the asteroid redirect mission where you just kind of plug them in and they dock. Now the first part I want to look at is the asteroid itself because this gets a little bit of modification done to it. As you can see we have empty slash total space and remaining rock as well as the asteroid size and you can see the asteroid also acts as a fuel tank where it has zero out of zero available rock. This will change momentarily. So let's go back to the jaw, and I have one attached right here, and let's activate it. Now when you activate the jaw to start melting rock, it's going to fire a high powered laser into the asteroid and melt the rock, basically creating space. So if we time accelerate here, then you'll notice empty slash total space is changing. There is still zero empty space, but total space is rising and you'll notice that the total space is equivalent to the amount of rock in the container as well as the asteroid's mass is or asteroid size is decreasing along with the remaining rock alright so we've accumulated about 2700 total space so let's disable the jaw now what exactly are we supposed to do with this we have zero empty space and we have 2700 total space well, the very first option you have to do with all this rock you have, the 2702 that I have, is you can vent it. Venting it will basically dump all the rock into space and you'll never have to see it again. The second option you have for utilizing the rock would be the extraction module or the converters. Now what these do is they convert large quantities of rock into other useful resources such as carbonite or any of the other MKS resources such as if we were to activate it then you would see carbonite is running and you can see that we're going to take a large amount of rock to get ourselves hardly any carbonite so just to kind of show you how inefficient the conversion process is we're going to convert about 700 rock so for 700 rock we get almost half a unit of carbonite very inefficient but still more efficient than dumping the rock into space going back to that rover I had there are also a couple of other parts you can use the rock and put it in rock tanks which just by normal field transfer of alt click then you can start filling up the tanks so the mass driver is the final use of rock and I've just put rock in my tanks and detached my rover now it has a specific impulse of 2100 which is greater than nuclear engines but less than ion engines however when you throttle up you have significantly more thrust at 32 kilonewtons however this uses rock and electric charge so as you notice I'm burning a decent amount of electric charge and you're probably going to want quite a few batteries and solar panels to keep this thing going and as you can see it burns rock quite efficiently so we had less than a hundred rock and we managed to get quite a decent chunk of Delta V for a decent sized rover alright now back on the asteroid we still have a decent bit of rock that we have no use for so like I said you can just vent it into space and it'll go away forever and you won't have to actually deal with it if you find it not being worth your time so we still have zero empty space out of 2702 total space so how do we use this space well the first thing you need to do is since this space isn't empty 
it's still being used for rock. So you can see we still have a rock container here, which means we can pour rock in here, but there's no real purpose of that. So what you want to do is you click Convert Space, and that converts all of the available space into empty space. And as you can see, we can no longer store any rock. However, if we continue mining with the claw, or the jaw, I should say, then we will be able to get more rock and more space, up to a maximum of whatever the remaining rock number is. So, now that we have all this empty space, what can we do with it? Well, that's where the fuel hatch comes in. Now, the fuel hatch comes in many varieties, each for the varied fuels, such as liquid fuel, which is this particular model. There are also fuel hatches for oxidizer, xenon gas, carbonite, and it's even optional to add your own for resources like cathane and ore from extraplanetary launch pads. Now when you right click on the fuel hatch you notice tank status 2702 available and what this is is this is the available space which is currently the total space since we haven't used any yet. Now what you can do is since we have zero out of zero liquid fuel in this module what we have to do is click expand tank and what that does is takes 100 of the available space and converts it to a liquid fuel container. And of course, we can dynamically expand this. So now we can store 1,000 liquid fuel in this tank. And as you can see, the empty space is 1,702 and the total space is 2,702. And of course, 1,702 is still available where the other 1,000 is used for the liquid tank. Now, if you don't need 1,000 space, then you can compress this to reduce the tank size. And you can do this dynamically. You can actually do this while liquids are being pumped from one object to the next. So I have a little liquid fuel container. And if I start pumping the liquid, then I can compress or expand the tank dynamically. Now, if you find that you don't need any fuel, you can dump it. And it will dump it by about... a to, it'll round it down to the next 100. So if you have 105 units of liquid fuel and you push dump, it'll bring it down to 100. As you saw, I had 150 and it brought it down to 100 and then 0. So it basically brings it down to a flat 100 number. So I've gone ahead and brought out another one of these fuel hatches, except this time one for cathane. Now, do note, you will not find this one in the install of the mod. That's because I made this one, and I just recolored the standard texture green and added KE on the side similar to the other hatches. It's very easy to do, and then I edited the config file to allow myself to have cathane stored in it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this tank because I have lots of cathane to store, and I'm going to expand it to be 2,000. Now when you're storing a large amount of any fuel in these, you don't alt-right-click the asteroid. You actually alt-right-click the fuel hatch, because that's where everything is happening. So, it turns out we only needed a thousand space to store our cathane. So, how about we compress this tank so we can save on space? So, I compressed it a couple too many times, three to be exact. So now we have 1,000 cathane out of 700 available space. Now, you may think that this is a very easy way to store things. You know, you can just pump your liquid in and then compress the tank into nothingness. And look, we have a thousand free cathane being stored. Well, if you do this, you're going to likely encounter bugs. And very strange things will happen. Now, if you do end up going past it, then you can always just expand the tank back up to the reasonable level, in which case you're storing the same amount. Or, if you find yourself compressed lower than you have available, you can transfer it out. Until, of course, it's, again, not kind of overpacked. Taking a quick look in the VAB, I wanted to demonstrate something. When you look under the Utility tab and find most of the parts for this mod, you'll see the different type of converters, you'll notice the jaw, and you'll notice fuel hatch. Now, the thing about the fuel hatch is it's a single part that uses the texture swap to change its functionality. So as you can see, this one is for carbonite. Now when you click previous texture or next texture, 
then it starts cycling through them. This fuel hatch is for liquid fuel, oxidizer, xenon gas, cathane, which is one I created, and rock, which is another one that I modified using the stock texture, which is white. Now there's one final interesting thing that I want to share, and that is about how exactly these parts work. Now they work just like the claw that is added in the Asteroid Redirect mission, or the NASA update from Stock Kerbal Space Program, version 23.5. And because the way these grabbers are designed to work, and the way docking in KSP works, it doesn't matter how you dock them, as long as that they get attached to something, and end up docked to the asteroid. So as you can see, I just docked the jaw to my vessel. I did not dock it onto the asteroid, but rather to my vessel. And when I right click on it, I can still melt rock. So now, by use of having this vessel, the actual jaw, in the locked state, meaning that it has grappled onto something, and that also being connected to the docked vessel of the asteroid, then I am able to actually start mining out some rock, even though it's not touching the asteroid. Now this works for the fuel hatches as well, just in case you felt like putting the fuel hatches out on a station appendage rather than directly on the asteroid. So this has been your Mod Spotlights on Asteroid Recycling Technologies by Roverdude and Wari. I thank you all for watching. This is PTTGRW, signing out.